Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Psalm 3 and 4. Now, remember yesterday we said that the book of Psalms is divided into an introduction, which we did yesterday, and a conclusion, and five books in between. And, and so this is book one, the beginning of book one. And I believe these two Psalms are about firstly safety and then provision. So uh, Psalm 3 is easy to interpret because uh, the compiler has put uh, the reason for writing of the Psalm. David was uh, having to flee. His son Absalom had mutinied against him. And you can read that story. In fact, if you've got time today, go to 2 Samuel 15 through 18 and read what happens. I mean, remember his son Absalom gets hold of the army, gets very powerful people, uh, aligned against David and really asserts himself as king of Israel. David has to flee. He takes his household. Everyone's crying as he's leaving. I mean, he's an old man. Uh, he's got this devilish insurrection that's come up against him. Uh, what is he going to do? And, and we, uh, this is, now this psalm gives us an insight into what's going on in his head. I mean, we know what he actually wound up doing physically, but what was going on in his, his heart, and his head? Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver me. These people are laughing at me. There, there was this guy called Shammai. Remember, he pelted them with stones and he mocked him and he said that you're an apostate. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head. Reminds me of the prophet Zechariah. Remember he said of the people of God, God is their, their hedge of fire around them and he's their glory with them. That was David's revelation. God is like a shield, a protective shield and his glory within. I call out to the Lord and he answers me. I lie down, I sleep. I wake up again because the Lord sustains me. And I'm sitting on the spare bed in our little apartment here. And he's basically saying, when I lie down in peace, that's a blessing. And the fact that I wake up in the morning and I'm still alive, that's also a blessing. He says, I will not fear. Maybe he's running for his life. He's got tens of thousands about to come against him and kill him. He says, I will not fear. Though tens of thousands are sailing on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me. My God, strike all my enemies, break their teeth. <laughs> that's quite vivid language. From the Lord comes my deliverance. Bless my people. Now, we know that he, he didn't want to kill his son. We know that he stopped people killing his son. He said, actually, don't, don't go out there and exact vengeance like the world would exact it. God will deliver me. God will set me free. God will punish those who need to be punished. And um, I don't know about you, but when I feel attacked, it's very easy to get into defensive mode. Not David. David sleeps well. David calls on the Lord. David sees this protection around him. Now, Psalm 4 is a little bit more difficult to understand because we're not told why David is writing it. Both these psalms written by David. The traditional understanding of this psalm is that because he says, uh, answer me and I'll call to you my righteous God. It's about righteousness. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will people turn my glory into shame? And um, people have said people are slandering David. It's, he's talking about righteousness, his righteousness, and people are saying, you're an evil man. The problem with that, as soon as he gets to verse 4, he starts to tell his detractors, tremble, do not sin, lie in your bed, search the Lord, be silent. Could be saying that. But there is another way to interpret this song. If you go down to verse 7, it says, my heart sings for joy when the new grain and the new wine abound. So it seems like the context is harvest time. At harvest time, there should be Great gladness, there should be great joy. But verse 6 says, many, Lord, are asking, who will bring us prosperity? So, remember, in those days, Baal worshippers were around them. And Baal was like their rain god. They would call on Baal for rain. And I think David's saying, are people now starting to ask, is God really going to sustain us? Because there's no joy, there's no harvest. Maybe they're turning to Baals. And, and then he says, uh, to them, how long will you people turn my glory to shame? Now, what was the glory of David? It wasn't his reputation. God was his glory. Remember, we've just seen that in the previous psalm. So he's saying, if you turn to bonds to try and get your prosperity, you're turning God's glory to shame. So he says, now listen, 
Verse 3. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears him when he calls. Tremble. Do not sin. When you are on your beds, you're in your beds, search your hearts and be silent and offer sacrifices of the righteous and trust the Lord your God for your provision. I don't know what your financial situation is right now. I certainly know that, you know, in the ministry we go through times of serious lack. And, you know, David is basically saying, don't be tempted to become unscrupulous. Don't be tempted to, to resort to the means of the ungodly. No, trust the Lord. Seek Him on your bed. And give the sacrifices of the righteous. In other words, give to God what is God's. And trust Him to provide for you. I think today's chapters were about protection and provision. God bless you.